Good day. In this video, I'll be modeling this open unit with a nice parametric spread of its shelf. So whilst I model this, we will learn some important functions like multiple copy and curving board. So let us start with parts and block. Now the start point is asking me a value. I'll stick to zero. And for my lengths in X, Y, and Z, I'll say 20 in X. 500 in Y and 2100 in Z. So this is my left hand side. And now I'll right click on this, make a copy to my right hand side at 600. And I say minus 20. So my outer size remains 600. Now I start my block again. This time I say my start point is here and my block should be up until here. It's asking the value in Z, so I say it's minus 20. Confirm with my OK button. Now I right click here and I say I'll copy from this point up until this point only in Z. So we made the carcass and I lift this up by 75 so that I can place a kick below. And now to add some fun in this, I am gonna go to my smart tools in my edges and I'll say I want to move my edges. So I'll be moving my horizontal edge from my right hand side and the vertical edge from my top. So I'll select both of them together. I confirm with middle mouse and I say move in Y. So I'll put a value of 250 in Y direction. And I'm gonna do the same thing here as well. So I select both of this, again the vertical edge of my bottom and horizontal of my left hand side. And I move in my Y direction by 250. So we have both the diagonal ends going in the same direction and making this cabinet looking weird as of now. I'll have to make some corrections. If you look at it closely, the notches here are coming out because we gave an angle to the sides. So we'll correct this. We have the same situation here on the top. For that, I'll just go on move edge, select this edge and I say move in Y by 5 mm. Now for the bottom notch, I can't move it 5 mm because it's at a greater angle. So I can move it point by point from here, but here I don't have a point to be selected. So the best thing would be I go in my side view and I go in my auxiliary line and I say I want to have a parallel auxiliary line to this. So I just double click here. I'll have a parallel auxiliary line to the edge of my right hand side and I double click on the top edge of my bottom. So now I have a point which I can select. So let's go on move edge. I say this edge should be moved from this point up until this point and it should go 5 mm inside so i say plus 5 and now i say in only y now let us see in exonometry view i can turn off my aux lines with h on my keyboard and i go back to my main menu and now the challenging part here is to make the internal shelves because both of my sides are going in different direction so we have a very cool function for it. I go in my part tools one and I say I want to make a multiple copy. The input bar is asking transform part one. So I say this is my part one. And again, it's saying what is your part two. So I say this is my part two. And now I will have an averaged out part in center. If I increase this number by just scrolling up my mouse wheel, so I can increase the number of shelves or else I can use this small arrows here. So I'll keep it eight. And if you notice my shelves are parametrically adjusted. So it's not going outside the boundaries of my sides. Now I say, okay. And if you want to add more fun to this cabinet, let's just go control Z one step behind and I'll go in my curve menu from my horizontal bar. So here I can click on curving board. I can say convert this panel into my curving board and as well this. And now I can just change one of the edge into a curve. For that I say edit my curve and I select this curve. So I get a gizmo here and now I can click on my Y axis 
and I can put a number here. So here is giving me a radius which is interactive. In the input bar, I can just type in 600. I'll do the same below. So I click on this edge and I say move in Y which gives me a radius and I can make a radius which is inverted or which is an outward. So I'll make it 600 outward and I confirm with my enter button. And now I right click, I go to my main menu, tools one. Let us do multiple copy out of this both parts and we'll have a nice curved shelves here. You can also go back to your curve menu and you can move this curve and make it inverted. So I click edit and I say instead of 600 outside, make it inside. And now I go to part tools one, multiple copy again, and I say both of this part should be nicely spread. So if you see your bottom is inverted and it is going outward and transforming into a top. So it's a nice piece of an art and we made it very quickly. I confirm with my OK mouse button. And now let us make our kick. So for that, I can think of maybe 10 different ways, but let us think of an easy way. So I go to parts and I say I'll make a profile here. And for the profile, I'll use faces as my reference and I'll select the face of my bottom. I confirm with my OK mouse button. So the length of this profile, I would say is 75 and I click with OK mouse button. So this should be inside, so I'll move it 50 mm inside. And I should be making my kick in a flexi ply. And I would get a flexi ply in 8 mm, so I would just make a copy of this and move it 8 mm behind. And now I'll go to my Boolean function and I'll say go to difference. And this part should remain and this should be subtracted. So I'll be left out with the kick what I wanted. And now I'm thinking of making it curved in vertical as well. So for that, I'll make a giant sphere behind my cabinet and I'll push my cabinet on that sphere to take a shape of it. So I'll make my sphere in Z axis and I'll make it from center. I click on OK. I'll just select one of the center point of my shelf and I give a huge radius here, maybe 6000 and I click OK. And now I move my sphere behind in Y. So I just move it behind my cabinet. Now we are going to push this cabinet onto this sphere and let it take its shape. So for that, I will have to make some divisions on my cabinet. If I look at it closely, my shelves are already having divisions. The only division I need to make is on my sides. So let's go in part tools two and click on divide. And I'll say I want to divide both of this sides. And this should be divided in Z with 36 segments so that the curve is nice enough. And I say OK. And now I go in my top view. I say I want to go in points function and I want to move the points on faces. So I select all of these points and I confirm with middle mouse. And now I have to define in which axis my points will be moved in. So I say it will go in Y and then the input bar is asking project on faces. So I have to select that the point should be projected on these faces. And now I confirm with my middle mouse button so the cabinet has taken the shape of my sphere. Now I can delete this. So we have a lot of unwanted segment as well, which we use to make it. So you can always go to your tools too, and you can say melt, and you can say faces, select all of your paths, confirm with OK. And you have to put a threshold value here. So we'll keep it at 0.1. This would melt all the unwanted faces. So the cabinet is clean again. Nice. And 
Now let us take it to the production part. So let us start by giving names to our parts. So I go in attributes, I say name from list. And instead of selecting the parts, I would put question mark in my input bar. This would suggest which parts are supposed to be named. And now I'll have to just click on my E button on keyboard. This would bring to an LH. And I say this is my end RH. This is my top. And this is my bottom. And for the shelves, I will just cancel this. And I say name from list again. And I go in my XZ view. I select all of my shelves together. And I say these are my fixed shelf. Okay. And this is my skirting. Now let us assign a group to all of our parts. So I say group parts and select all of it. Confirm with middle mouse and I give it a name. Open and now I am ready to make machining out of this. So I click on my workshop and I say make a type automatic drilling. And I select all of this part. I'll use a lamello drilling so which will bring the biscuit joints and it will give automatic drilling to all of my parts. I can also choose to give it a standard KD fitting so I'll delete all of it and I say type automatic all of my parts and use a normal drilling for my cabinet. So it will bring my KD fittings of double and minifix. I know this is all very fast so I promise to make a video which will only cover the drilling part and once it's done I'll put a link below. Now the next step is to give a router for cutting all of our parts. So in the workshop again I have to go in router parts and select the parts which I want to cut. So I'll say I will select by equal thickness and the input bar is asking to select the sample part. Once I click my sample part, all with the same thickness are selected. I confirm with my middle mouse and here I get a dialog to select my router. I click depth equal to thickness, which means the depth of my router will not exceed the thickness of my panel. And I can also give an extra gap of 0.5, but make sure you have a waste MDF board placed on your router bed. So my router will go with a depth of 20.5 in this case. I'll select a tool to cut my panel. So I'll stick to 12mm router and make sure your router's alignment is at right hand side because if I bring it to left hand side then my panel size will be reduced by 12mm from all the sides. So keep it right so the router will move from outer edges of your part. I say OK and you see your edges have turned yellow which means a router command has been applied. And now I will nest it into an 8x4 panel. So for that I will go in my workshop, in my 3D function, I say board from stock and I go in my top view. So I will place 20mm birch ply in my scene. I will bring around 3 sheets. 2 should be enough but let us put an extra sheet in case there is more wastage. And now I go back to my workshop, I say I want to do a nesting. And the input bar is asking which parts are my stock parts. So these are the parts we bought in. I confirm with middle mouse and the input bar is asking me to select the parts which I want to cut. So I will use a filter and I say equal thickness. I click on a sample part. So this selects all the 20 mm parts which I want to cut. I confirm with middle mouse and we have our nesting dialog here. So since our parts are polygons, I say the nesting will be in polygon and I'll say enable part rotation. As of now, I don't click on observe grain. I say enable part flip. For margin edge stock, I'll say 10 mm. It means the system will leave an offset of 10 mm on all the sides from my board. So this is useful in case there is any chipping on your board. For marginate parts, I'll say 12mm because I'm using a 12mm router to cut. And in my accuracy, I can go up to 8. This will take more time while you nest, but it will give you a better result. Now we click on OK and we'll see the results of our nesting. So all of our parts are laid flat and we have to have a patience here. 
So the system will find out the best result to reduce the wastage. And once you are satisfied with the results, so you can click on finish. So this is how you will be cutting your parts. We'll go in top view and we turn off shaded so we see the machining as well. And when you export this, we can turn off the horizontal drilling, which can be done manually on a multi boring or a CNC machine. I'll go in my workshop graphics because the text is too tiny here. And I'll say I want to make it 20. So we have all of our panel placed correctly with nice machining as well. That was all from my side today. Thank you for watching.